All right, let's get the bolts out. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, and I removed the uh, the rod from the tumbler. Uh, yeah, there's a. Uh, you can mark it with tape if you want. Um, so earlier, um, when I was messing with getting that latch out of the trunk, um, I wasn't convinced that it was moving far enough with the tumbler uh, when it was when I was trying to mechanically push that key up. So I pushed this rod further up uh, into the latch assembly so that way I was more guaranteed that it would unlock instead of not being enough to unlock the, the mechanism. So I'm not as concerned about this going back exactly where it came out of because I put it further up in, in the first place. So, But you may want to do that before you take yours apart if you care about getting it back exactly where it needs to go. Alright, so... Here she is. Let's see. So, there's our hockey puck. Hockey puck is in good shape. And... The other thing that uh, is common failure is all the orifices that have the BBs in them. Or whatever you want to call them. Alright, so... Right above my thumb there, looking at the BB down in there, and typically what you'll find is that these tubes have a crack in them. And I mean these BBs are all over the place. There's a, there's a BB up in this orifice right above the, the thumbnail, and then these things go all over the place. So yeah, you'll see tons of videos about how folks have put epoxy around these little tubes in order to prevent the leaks from happening. In my case, that is not what was going on um, because the hockey puck is working. Let's do some testing while it's in this condition to see what all happens when we do some unlocking and locking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actuate the trunk using the button to see what happens. This little um, plunger should come out of the hockey puck in order to unlatch the trunk. Okay, so that works as advertised. What is not happening anymore, and I guarantee, I promise you, this was happening, is when I would hit the button, not only would the this plunger actuate, but the whole, this soft close was actuating also. And what it, so all this goes down in here, there's a metal lever, and that metal lever down in there touches another metal lever in order to actuate your soft close and pull the trunk all the way down so that way your second latch, the second detent of your trunk close latch goes from one, one to two. So we'll do that right now. We're gonna go from one, which is the open condition, and we're gonna go down one and then I'll try and flip it over so you can see the actuation. There's that. Nah, I'm not going to catch it. But the actuation happens. We'll get it on the release here, hopefully. Because the pump's still running, so it's still fighting it closed. There you go. So, after that delay, after it gives it 20 seconds, 15 seconds, whatever it is, of soft close, pull closed, it pulls it down to the second detent. Now, my, not necessarily concern, but my curiosity is, why is it fighting that thing for 15 seconds? There's two switch detents, so the first one is working because once it hits the first detent, obviously it pulls it the rest of the way closed. The question is, is it maybe the second detent that's not telling the computer that the trunk is closed and therefore that soft close is continuing for 15 seconds. So, let's do some uh, continuity tests. I'm going to check this one here. So I'm going to unplug the blue one and then there's another one over here, that one. Not sure which one monitors what, but we'll do some, uh, do some digging here and I'll get back with you. 